this is the moment that many of you have been waiting for. Uh, I'm going to the park with uh, two legends. One, Philip the Knox. He's going to be using his Equinox. Two, uh, I'm going to be bringing the Knock the Legend. And we're going to go signal for signal, meaning that at the beginning of this video, I'm not going to be doing detecting. Disclaimer, my ADHD took over. I'm going to wait for him to get a deep signal, and we're going to see if we could match it with the uh, Knock the Legend. That part is true, and you don't want air tests. You want real life scenarios, situations. Nobody can pull deeper signals than Phil. Let's see if we can match it. New York is the perfect testing ground for this metal detector. We've got bottle caps. We've got tons of iron. We have signals upon signals close to each other, far away from each other, deep, shallow, you name it. We've got different types of dirt. Some of it is fill dirt, some of it is the natural stuff. We're gonna be detecting on the natural stuff in a park that is somewhat neutral today. Not too many bottle caps, but lots and lots of deep signals. There is iron in this park. I've detected it many times. I've pulled a ton of silver from it. And uh, we're gonna see how we do today. All right, folks, two legends, one, the legend, and the other legend, Philip the Knox. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's do this. Nice yeah. intro. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see how the legend does. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Let's do it. All right, we're going middle of the scale in terms of uh, recovery speed. All right, when I say neutral, let me be very specific. Uh, I ran park because uh, it says designed for coin and jewelry hunting. In urban areas and parks where there are lots of modern trash, aluminum foil, pull tabs, bottle caps, etc. present. Yeah, welcome to New York. Uh, that fit the bill right there. On the sensitivity scale, that was not neutral. I always try to go as high as possible as the detector will uh, permit me to do. Sensitivity is the depth setting of the device. It is also used to eliminate the ambient electromagnetic signals from the surrounding environment and noise signals transmitted from ground. Sensitivity consists of 30 levels and default setting is 25. I went above 25. Most of the day I was at or close to 30. We wanted to figure out how deep can this machine go. Also importantly, I always uh, prefer to hunt in all metal mode. I like to hear everything. Another disclaimer that I will give you, in terms of ground balance, it says here, the legend is designed to work without ground balancing on most terrains. However, for experienced users and on highly mineralized grounds, ground balancing will bring extra depth and stability to the device. Uh, that's definitely true with any metal detector, but I was not tuned into it yet. This, this device is going to do fine. You're going to see that. But um, I do not. I did not have the tracking on. And the next time I'm going out, you better believe I'm putting on the tracking. That is a fixture uh, that I have on the Equinox. Um, I kind of gave the Equinox an unfair advantage because Phil's, of course, had the tracking on. Uh, mine is not tracking. Frequency shift. Hmm, I, I saw it as channels because I use the Equinox. And basically, if you get an EMI, uh, there are different channels that you can put your Equinox in. This, uh, I see that there is a, um, whatchamacallit, a way that you can automatically choose that. I didn't do that. I went mid-scale with frequency shift. Just a disclaimer. When I said I put these settings neutral, these were the settings that I was most talking about recovery speed and stability. I put it at the middle of the scale, which is a three for stability. Recovery speed, I started out at five, and I went a little bit lower on that, actually. I went to a four later in the video. And um, middle of the scale across the board, that's where I started yesterday. And uh, now we have it in park mode, Gonna ground balance. And we are off. 
Oh, I know what I gotta do. I gotta pair my headphones. I love these headphones, by the way. And I'm like, wait, why is it beeping there? Pairing the headphones is as simple as going to the Bluetooth tab and switching the value from a zero to a one. All right, so Phil marked something off that he considers an interesting signal. Um, it's pretty far down the scale. There's an iron gauge over here and there's a non-ferrous. Picking it up, no problem. Can you identify what it is? Like what you possibly think it is? I just started with this. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just asking, bro. <laughs> yeah. It would be something that I dig. Okay. One one thing uh, I'll say about this: the scale. After using it at the beach yesterday, it's entirely different when it's in the ground versus when it's out of the ground. And we'll be looking to that. So, you want to dig this? Oh, okay. So I'll dig this. To answer Phil's question, uh, it is uh, th there's clues that he knows uh, on the Equinox that lead him to believe that an object is silver. In fact, I have a video that I'm going to link here, the man who can hear silver. We've tested him a bunch of times on stuff that he possibly could not have known, uh, and he, he dude gets it right. So, really talented detectorist, but it's his inference from hearing that makes him uh, able to do that. The Equinox is very good with that. Uh, the Deus is spectacular with that. What he was asking is, does the legend compete in that category? Can you figure out the size of an item while you're going over it with the coil? I, w I would say yes. At this point, I would say yes. I could hear size differences, definitely. Um, the pinpoint, of course, helps too, uh, but uh, you can get some inference on the signal, and uh, you know th this answer will grow in time. This is, you know, the first video that I've done on soil, the second video total, uh, but I'm going to test that more, and we're going to see. All right, we got it out. It's a quarter. All right, glad quarter. Forgot to mention that was about six inches. And on, and on the scale, what did that go as? Um, 50, it was around 50. So the silver range on that is what, 50 to 60? Um, for dimes, mm. I don't know if we have enough information, but uh, this was a silver coin that I pulled yesterday. Look, I'm wrapping. Scratching a record. <laughs> yeah, we'll call this record scratch sig signal. Oh, there we go. We just got our first silver. I'm going to have to calculate because it's, uh, I mean, I, I found a silver dime yesterday and that was ringing at 60, but it was really deep. Okay. And 60 is the top of the scale. Phil just asked a good question. How's the separation over here? Because we have a lot of targets and it's getting them I mean it the amphibio was really good with separation so this is not a surprise I want to see how it does around iron and I want to see if it could match all of Phil's signals and of course I'm gonna try for my own too I wish I had full audio on that, and I can easily do that in the next video. But if you listened really carefully, you could hear it. It sounded like a machine gun. Beep, 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 beep. This was with the recovery speed at half. This is a very capable detector. This is something else. Okay, can you can you declare that again? But what is it going to be? I believe it's going to be a wheat penny. He thinks it's going to be a wheat penny. I'm getting it. You're picking up like the other coin near it too? It's like, it's, it's two coins. I'm just getting one, I believe, or it's merging it. I'm middle on the scale. I don't have the recovery speed on high. Okay. Well, this is like a little bit of a trashy part here. And there's a skip, and you know what? Let's go all metal. I'm glad 
There we go. We're an old metal now. And what kind of depth is it telling you? Um, Five, six range again? So there is one, two, three, four bars here for this. It was going between three and four bars. So we're, we're talking like what? Is, is the bars doubled like the Equinox or no? Um, yeah, I'd say even more. Um, really? I, I, I'm guessing at that though. I don't though. think that's any deeper than six inches to be honest with you. Well, let's see. All right, go ahead, check it out. Let's go. It was a pull tab, and it was about six inches down. I, I cried bloody foul on that. It's all good. Well, well, we'll see if there's something else in here. It could be that there's something else in here. I was picking up. You were saying double signal. <laughs> I'm getting something over here in the 30s that's a similar signal. Let me see if that's what I what I heard. Is that I, I, I did not pick that. them up as two separate signals though. All right, the plot thickens. So Phil's saying that there's a signal over here. I'm only getting a signal here. And maybe something residual over here. I'm not getting anything over here. All right, we're both turning off our Bluetooth and we're gonna try to show you this. I see, right over there. Okay, now let me try. All right, so I'm getting one right here. Maybe I am. Yeah, that's very shaky, but I am picking it up. I don't know if that's something I would dig. Well, you gotta keep in mind, we, we that's something I would dig. All right, I'm getting that. So let's actually get those two signals. Yep, that's something I'd dig. All right, on mine, watch this. Nothing this way. Clear repeat this way. Are you getting a clear repeat both ways, you'd say? I'm only getting a repeat one way. Clear. That's pretty clear. Try again. disappears or you get it one way all right well let's get this philip the knox wants you to know this is a wheat scent this is indeed a wheat scent that was that uh, was about nine inches um you know this it's got a scale eight inches to here nine there eight and a half inches down but it's where it got the wheat scent right it got it in between a pull tip pull tip and we've got another target here okay another target there let's see if we could get that well we don't want that one that's not good oh this one over here is not I good it's pull tip. what you just saw happens all the time in new york two signals at close proximity and uh, one turned out to be a wheat scent, one turned out to be a pull tab. We didn't dig it. It could have been something else. But uh, Phil, the one that he was interested in and tuning into, was the wheat scent. We were able to get that. Was it immediately clear to me, remember I'm brand new at this detector, was it immediately clear to me right away that there was a deeper signal there? next to the more obvious signal. It's almost like in the sky, you could have a really bright star, and then you could have a dim one right next to it. Um, you know, Phil, and actually I too, you know, we have used the Equinox for years. 
the chance is better for either one of us to pull that on the equinox. But what wound up happening was after he tuned me into that dim star, which was the wheat scent, I was able to pull that at nine inches. After watching this again, you know, everything is more logical. You know, when you, in retrospect, when you see it again, I wish that I knocked up the recovery speed. You give up depth when you bump up the recovery speed, but it, it separates a lot better. And was I able to get it with the legend? Yes, I was. Um, I certainly was not tuning into it, though. But the essential question is, can the user who used the legend for two years, picture this, two years in the future, would you or I have tuned into that signal after so much use? That's the essential question right there. Uh, of course, the settings could have been different with recovery speed. That would have helped with the separation. But... Um, it, bottom line was it was able to get it all right phil's at recovery speed three on his so i'm going to try to match that on this well there goes everything out the window right there if he was at recovery speed three of a possible eight he was on a lower overall recovery speed uh, than i was this is all hypothetical and remember the Knox, you know has had multiple updates so far, the legend has had zero, and uh, with each one of those updates, the Nox did indeed get better. I'm confident that Nocta will get there, but as of right now, for that one, I would say advantage Nox. I got something bouncing up into the 50s. Then the legend hears me calculating all of this and had to pull something great. Mostly in the 40s. Let's see. I might have gotten a ring. Yes, I did. Hey, Phil. You might be waiting for the Taco Bell has been unlocked banner. Oh, that's not happening. I I'm playing hardball. They took away the Mexican pizza. They said they were going to bring it back. They didn't bring it back. I'm spiteful. Ring. There we go. This just had an interesting sound. Okay, why is this bottom part like this? Silver ring. With like tape at the bottom. Thank you. Yes, sir. You should have called me over. We could have compared notes. We could, I just, I'm learning this thing, man. I'm learning this thing. Thanks, buddy. Oh, it's got a K on it, like Kazanjian. Have you guys ever heard me pronounce my last name? Kazanjian. It's pronounced Jones. There we go. I gotta get this tape off. But I won't do that on the camera. Well, this was my first ring pulled with the legend. And it is actually gold over silver. So you could see the gold in here. Like, look in there. And uh, the layer underneath is silver, and that's why it rung up so high. But it's got a little bit of that plating still left on it. Cool find. Okay, so this next signal is going to be very, very, very telling. Now, note that Phil and I are using different machines, but we're using the same sized coil. And in terms of getting depth, Coil size is arguably uh, maybe secondary factor to sensitivity in terms of getting depth. So he's calling me over for a signal that is barely registering. It's giving him that that phantom skip in the threshold. Okay, uh, say say that again. It's right on the very end of hearing your audio response. So this, okay, this one is gonna be uh, a slight chirp. And it's going to be completely a break in my threshold. Okay, but so this, this one, this I, one I you're barely I hearing believe, on the knocks. This I is a deep one. Silver. He thinks he's got silver, folks. If anybody wonders how I can do it at it, it's just uh, three years of using it. <laughs> okay, so right where your trowel is. Say it's going to be. 
Oh, right there. Now it's picking up your machine. Same thing. I got a blip. My sensitivity already is at 30. Now, on your scale, what's it telling you? Nothing. There's nothing on the scale. Can you show us what you're seeing on yours? I'm getting the same kind of response you're getting. Let me move this away from you. Everybody's gonna be able to hear my threshold. But I, I detect with the threshold on. So I'm gonna, like it's like super loud now. No no, you hear the chirp and then you hear the threshold break. Alright, so that's an example of a threshold break. Yeah, you see how I'm getting the hit and yeah. the threshold breaking as I'm coming back, so... Gotcha. And a clear pinpoint. This is the pinpoint. Sounds so like it, jazz music. It's a small, you know, target. I'm getting half the chirp and then the break in my threshold. That's why I like to use my threshold. Gotcha. I, I, I'm about 99% positive it's a coin. Okay, go for it. He's digging, folks. There we go. Oh, he got Skilva. There it is. There it is. Did you not? Merc, it would have been a barber if it wasn't me here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, that's man. Your, that's your 910 uh, inch dime. Hey, go pound that, sir. Thanks, bud. Conclusions on that. Um, it was able to get a repeat. It was a one-way repeat, but it was very similar to what I heard on Phil's knocks. If anything, I heard more of a skip on Phil's knocks. And, uh, you know, that's really advanced detectorist stuff, uh, understanding what a skip in the threshold is. But it, it shows it, it's matching signals. This one was a match. I didn't see one advantage, uh, one machine over the other at all. So my recovery speed is about four now. Here's where you're going to see two things. One, target separation ability. Two, iron. I barely dug iron this day. And if you've watched my videos before, I, I am just... <laughs> it's a talent of mine to dig up iron, a talent that I don't want. I barely dug up iron, but watch what happens here. Also, look at this through the lens of separation abilities. So th this is an interesting one. That lets me get deeper stuff. Might merge a few signals together. But actually, no. 35 here. Look at how close that is. Good job, Nocta. All right, we got a problem. This one just disappeared. Still getting over here. I thought I had one right over there. Signal there, I'm sure you're getting. You got a surface like Penny right here. Yeah. 
but I had a deep signal right next to it that seemed to be very separate. Getting anything? To be honest with you, I'm not getting anything in your hole. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's get that surface penny, shall we? It was a 1980 Memorial penny. Double signal, same hole. Those two pennies were pressed up against each other, merged together for one signal. Um, that piece of iron, it was interesting to me. It it, uh, it rang up uh, just like a, uh, really, a, a high conductor. Uh, but it, was it due the, to the proximity? One of the things that Nocta is going to add is an iron bias. I get it why they don't want one. Uh, because really, just as is, I was barely digging up any iron. Uh, this was the one time I got really confused, uh, you know, on a signal. And that, that's going to happen with any detector that's out there. Um, it showed me that it can separate. It showed me also the iron is something that remains to be worked out in that. It really shouldn't have done that. Uh, you should have heard the separation but you should have heard iron plus uh, the non-ferrous signal. Repeating 3940. All four bars down. Up to 48. All right, about uh, seven, eight inches down, we are on the wheat. 1940-something. Wheat scent. This is one that Phil called me over for. So he's been using the Knox for years now, and he's very familiar with it. He tests it. He's saying that this could be something that's like a two-level signal, in that there's one level here, one level here. And that could be it. One, two, one, two. Let's see. On top of the other. So this is the one on top of the other signal. I hear the high low. Yeah. Cool. Let's see what it is. And up top, the little charm was. Oh dang. Holy cow, how did you hear that? Told you. <laughs> Good stuff, man. On both detectors, the response was very similar. That's what I was looking for. They're the road to silver. They are. Um, wheat scent. Yeah, that was a good yeah, six inches down. The year of the buffalo nickel continues. There we go. Awesome. All right, Phil headed out. Let's see how I do. Well, I saw the silver center, but that's not silver. Um, I think it's aluminum. That is a New York subway token. We just unlocked subway. Well, congratulations to you, Johnny. You just won a trip on the subway. Whoa, whoa, hold your underpants. Listen, I'm sorry to tell you, but those tokens don't work no more. So here is what we're gonna do. Boom. Subway has, has been, been unlocked. Intriguing 3233. Well, look at this. This is covered with iron, but my question is is this an iron piece in here? That does not look like iron in here. So if this was able to get something connected, like, okay, you know what this is? This is part of an old pocket knife. That's what this is. And we have the blade in here. I believe one of the blades, and we could pull this apart. I mean, it's silvery. Could that have been, I don't know. I don't know. 
It turned out to be iron, but that's one of only two iron signals that I pulled that day. The rest of what I dug was uh, a lot of clad, you know, the usual uh, pull tabs, which are still around, and, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff. Nothing too special, you know, like the ring or the buffalo nickel. Uh, but um, I was overall very impressed with this detector. And I want to say, you know, there have been no updates to it. The Equinox, there have been multiple updates to it. So there's more coming with this. So, what are my thoughts? Again, the familiarity obviously goes to the Equinox. That's an advantage that any detector that I'm starting with would have to overcome. You're going to see me use, like, let's say that uh, a big event happens, you know, like a big storm on the beach. I'm going to go with the detector that gives me the best chance to succeed. It's still the Equinox. It's not that far off, though. Uh, one thing I'll say, it needs to have uh, different coils. Um, you know, the 15-inch coil, especially for beach hunting and park hunting that uh, in places that are not super littered on, um, that's a difference maker. Uh, Nocta said that they're coming out with larger coils. Um, that will be a game changer for this. Second, through uh, two hunts, uh, and only two hunts, I have not seen the capacity to find small objects. I know about that stability setting. The stability setting uh, will, you know, it, it alter the detector's ability to do that. But again, Equinox doesn't need a stability setting to do just that. But I could see the capacity of this detector. And if you really take a look at the value that you get, um, let's put it this way. I think the value might actually be with the legend, but if you're giving me a choice of what I would use on a best day, and this also could be because of all of that schema that I have in here uh, from using the Equinox for years, I would still go Equinox as of right now. I'm committing to using this more. I can't like use it once or twice and give you an accurate uh, assessment of it. But right now, as I see it, I don't know, maybe 95% of an Equinox. And could it get to 100%? Could it get to surpass it? It depends on those updates. I give a slight advantage to separation on the Equinox. Um, depth seemed to be the same thing. Um, feel, target ID, um, you know, that that's a toss-up. But again, the familiarity... It, it, it's t it's tough for me to say because I'm so familiar with the Equinox and I'm less familiar with the legend. Going into what I just said about value, y you get those amazing headphones, you get a great ergonomic package, you get a flashlight on the back of your detector, you get a clock. You won't go wrong if you buy this detector. You will have a highly competitive detector that is at the top of uh, you know the field right now. A anything that can keep up with an Equinox, I'm impressed. They did the multi-frequency technology right. It, it has a better feel than, uh, say, the Garrett Apex or even the Vanquish. Uh, I'll put this above a Vanquish. Like, I'll say that now. I'm comfortable saying that now. I think that this would give me a better chance of success than a Vanquish. All of this is premature. Remember that, and we're going to use this more. I'm committing to at least... 50 hours, I might even commit to 100 hours on this. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's a question. And this is the, another essential question that I have. If I am here with my understanding of an equinox, and I'm here with my understanding of a legend, and the ceiling is the same for both, I might as well stick with the equinox, right? But if I'm a new user, if I'm brand new and I see that value, I see a better value out there and you could grow into the same thing with use, y you might want to think uh, legend. That's how I see it right now. I don't see anything that is really going to be superior to the Equinox, but equal to perhaps. 
but we ha that that's where the testing has to come in. That's why you got to stick around and watch this. We will get to the bottom of this because I want to use the detector that I feel gives me the best chance of succeeding. And uh, that, that I couldn't put it better than that last sentence. So let me just leave it at that. Thanks, everybody.